Hi, my name is Bob Davis. I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Research Point in Austin, Texas. And I'm John Rogers, Research Point's Medical Director, also based in Austin, Texas. Well, there's certainly some basic differences mm -hmm. that, that you experience uh, when you're dealing with a drug. You usually consider that also to be a biologic. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with a device, you're dealing with basically a device that the FDA is going to uh, give you guidance on and as to how you're eventually going to be regulated. You have your pre-marketing authorization, which is for the more uh, rigorously tested products. So the FDA really regulates um, the class of devices based on how much safety and efficacy data that they're going to want to see before they give approvals. Mm -hmm. But you know, they have some cases where you think it's a device and it turns out to be a drug, or you think it's a drug and it turns out to be a device. And really it depends if there's any pharmacologic action that goes any chemical reaction that really needs to go on. Uh, we have a product right now that we infuse, but then we activate it through a laser and it's regulated as a device. In the main, it seems like devices and their attendant adverse experiences are related to the region where the device is found. So a total knee arthrodesis, for example, you know, very regional in its placement, very regional in its complications. The differences that um, you have with devices from drugs is that when you file your protocol, you also have to submit your case report forms on the device side mm -hmm. as opposed to on the drug side. So they have a very clear understanding of what you're going to collect and how you're going to collect it. Right, right. And you know, from a monitoring perspective, I find that you can do a little bit easier target collection of data mm -hmm. on the device side than the drug side because it's more of a local action in many situations. Right. You know, you also have in vitro diagnostics that are regulated um, by the device side. And so a subject's participation in there is basically during the period of time that they have their blood drawn. So how much adverse events do you have there? Probably not many unless they pass out uh, from when you draw their blood. So when we were talking about in vitro diagnostics, often what you're talking about is sample management, making sure the samples get to the lab to be tested mm -hmm. and go on. Whereas um, in drug studies, that's more of a safety thing as opposed to the efficacy of the product. Right. Actually, the FDA for in vitro diagnostics, which are usually uh, considered 510Ks, if you have, uh, your, if your product influences the treatment of a cancer, it's automatically, a, um, goes for a PMA and mm. not a 510K. Mm. So whether it be your uh, PSA screening or your HPV potentially, uh, those would all be uh, considered a uh, class three device. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a 510K, you have to compare it to what's termed a predicate device, mm -hmm. meaning something that's already approved for the indication you're looking at, and that's what you compare it to. And the FDA then says you have to show substantial equivalence. Now that doesn't say it has to be equal. Right. It's not like the generic drugs. It's much more of a, a analogous to a 505B2 pathway mm -hmm. than it is to a, an, an ANDA, if you will, for a generic product. Right. 